How many games did you play last year? Do you remember? Do you know? Last year, I think I played, well, if I start tomorrow, uh, I think it'll be my 64th game for West Ham. So, so not, not Premier League, but just total? In total. That's not. a funny thing because every, everybody thinks that oh, Declan Rice played twice for England. All of a sudden, oh, he's broken through. You broke through last, se- last yeah. year. No, no. Overall, last season, I played 28 games. But that's not starting. That's like, over, I think I started about 13, 14 of them. The rest were coming off the bench. And then this season, I've played every minute since the fifth game of the season, which was Everton away, funny enough. <laughs> so really, last season, you know, you had the... Goalkeeping thing where it kept changing yeah, all the time. The back four yeah, kept changing. changing. Back four to a back three. Back three. You were in there sometimes. Yeah. There was a lot of there was a lot of change really, Massive wasn't there? Whereas this year, you start. You got a great experience manager in, in Pellegrini. Yeah. You go to Anfield. Yeah. And then you got well. You you only played the first half, didn't you? Yeah, I got dragged at half time. <laughs> what do you think then? You think, oh no, no. Yeah, no. Bad start to the season. Yeah, I was. I was saying this to Ryan Fredericks the other day. I was thinking on the plane on the way, I'm like, I'm not cut out for this level yet. I was generally thinking. Like, but it's funny how people actually, football changes so quickly, know, doesn't yeah. it? I remember I had those moments in my first, you know, first year at Bayern as well, where you think, but then it's those moments that actually make you, yeah, it's, don't it? Yeah, it's spot on. I was thinking on, like, to go on loan. Like, we've just played Liverpool. They played us off the park. I was dragged at half time. It was on TV. Everything about it couldn't have gone any worse. And thinking about it then, thinking to go on loan or, well, I didn't actually end up going on loan. Because you didn't play the next two games, didn't you? No, I didn't play. I didn't play for the, yeah, I weren't in the squads. Um, and I knew I, I knew I had to work harder and, and improve. And did, you, did you talk to the to yeah, Pellegrini yeah, yeah, though? Yeah, yeah, I went into the manager and I was, obviously I was disappointed not to be in the squad. But obviously after the first performance, I couldn't have said anything. <laughs> but that's the thing, when you don't play well, you, you kind of go in there, yeah. you, want, you want some answers, but you don't yeah, want yeah, to be can't too cheeky, nothing. do you? No, but I knew, I knew I just had to get back to the training field, work hard and, and prove that, you know, I can play in this team. And luckily enough, you know, I've, over the international breaks, you know, when I was missing out, I was, was training harder, you know, during the week I was willing to learn, you know, I wanted to better myself and I managed to get back in the team and haven't looked back since. The thing is, you guys are so much more settled now. The goalkeeper, he's, yeah. he's been brilliant really, yeah, hasn't he? He's, he's unbelievable. Been, he's, he, he, I think he's... Very underrated. Diop's come in and, and done great. Andy Balbuena's great, done great. Yeah. You've got you and Noble seem to have like yeah. a little a, yeah. a partnership in there. Yeah, we've got a great group. Um, we've got a really, really good group. It's, di- it's much different to last year. Um, like you said, Diop's come in with Balbuena, two new centre halves adapting to the Premier League. And obviously, I've been sat in front of them, and I have to say they've they've been unbelievable. And like you said, with Nobes, you know, it's like that father son connection with me and him. You know, he's always helping me out on the pitch and. You know, I tried to help him out as well, and I think we just have a, a good connection because we're so close. And you know, you, you probably know it's like you know when you play with someone in midfield, you really enjoy it. You feel confident. That's what I feel like when I when I play with Mark. The thing when I when I used to play with people, people used to think you'd want to play with a more skillful player. Yeah. Really, you just wanted to play with a person that you knew you could rely on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean that yeah. wasn't running off doing no. his own thing, no. or you know that it was somebody you could actually. You know, you looked out for each other yeah. on the pitch, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. I think you can say that about Nobes, like he's so reliable. He's, he's so many games in the Premier League. And, you know, he's, he's passing all his experience on to me, and you know, he's, he's really rubbing off on me. And I think it's really good as well because off the pitch, you know, we're always talking, we're always chatting. You know, we go out, we go for food. Like we just got such a good connection. And you know, some people might think it's weird, but it's, it's really, really good. I, I love it. Is um. How important has the manager been in terms of, you know, he's obviously brought, in, brought through some pretty special players in, in his career. You think about Isco, uh, Malaga, some young players. He's got experience with, you know, very talented young guys like yourself. Yeah, the manager's been key for me this season. Um, like we just spoke about then, obviously, the first couple of games, you know, I was dragged and then weren't in the squads. And, you know, he then, he then put me back in. And, you know, I think, I think where, I've, where I've been playing so well... Um, you know, he, he hasn't been able to take me out. I've, I've been giving him a headache. Uh, obviously, we've got much more experienced players than me in the squad, but, you know, where I'm playing well and, and I'm confident, he's showing the faith in me and, and, and starting me, and I'm really grateful for that. And like you said, he's worked with some, some top, top players at Madrid, City, and so to be working under him and, and, and learning everything is, is a special experience. I mean, I'll be honest, I've seen you play a lot of games this year. I don't... I didn't see the Liverpool game, so you're lucky. <laughs> I'm lucky then. I'm lucky. I haven't seen you play poorly. <laughs> Do you take pride in the fact that, you know, consistency is such an important thing for a young player, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's massive, consistency. Um, especially in the Premier League, you know, f- from, from minute one to minute 95, you've got to be so switched on. Demanding. It's, it's so demanding, the Premier League. And 
like you said, then I'll take it as a compliment. I haven't played poorly. Like I just, I just try to start the games, start the games well, and just grow myself, grow myself into the game, and, and gain more confidence. And, and that's what I try to do. Is that something I used to do that when I, I'd start a game, especially when I was younger, because you didn't have a, a ton of experience to fall back, yeah. and I'd think about right, keep it simple to start. Yeah. If I'm rolling, then I'll start. Yeah taking a few more chances. Yeah, are, you, yeah. are you a bit similar? Yeah, it's, it is a bit like that, to be honest. Where I've been playing more, from the start now, I'm up for it anyway. Like, I'll, I'll take risks and, and do what I need to do. But at the start, I'll definitely say it's like that. You don't want to make a mistake with the crowds, what, 60,000 people here watching. You know, if you misplace a pass or something like that, you, you do worry about it when you start your career, for sure. But now it's just part and parcel of the game. How much do you think being released from Chelsea at, you know, at 14 has, has kind of almost... Those moments are difficult as a young kid. I had the same. I was. I didn't make a Canadian team at four, the national team at 14, and I remember I played with a chip on my shoulder for such a long time because of it. Do you think it was almost a blessing in disguise? Massively, yeah. Looking looking back at it, then um, I was distraught. Obviously, you're probably at one of the best academies in the world, and you've just been released. But I always remember it was that night. I got released around three o'clock, and at six o'clock I was training with Fulham. Really? Yeah, six o'clock that night I was really? training with Fulham. And then the next day... How'd you get to Fulham so quick? <laughs> no, because I live in Kingston. It's right ah, next okay. to Fulham. And... So would your dad day, just take you straight there? Or? Yeah, so they literally they were on the phone straight away. Brilliant. And on that Thursday, I was at West Ham training at Chadwell Heath. So, oh. like, been released and then trained with two new clubs. And it's one of them ones where you've got to have a strong mentality and, and just get on with it because every kid's, every kid's dreams to be a footballer. Um, and at that point there, you know, you could have just stopped. And I've seen it with, you know, quite a few players now who are not playing in the game. But, you know, I was so hungry to succeed and I only wanted to be a footballer. And, you know, I just had to, to do what I could and then made the progression at West Ham. But for sure, the, the releasing of me at Chelsea, I would say definitely turned me, turned me into a man looking back at it. I think if you look at all these young kids, you get all these talented young kids and they want to play in the biggest academies, the Cities and the Chelsea's and the United's. But it almost seems like you, you're... You're better off playing in a place where there's a, there is a pathway. Do you know what I mean? Because you look at all those talented kids at Chelsea, yeah. and you know, even the Hudson and Doys, and the, it's hard. It's really hard for them to get into the first teams. Whereas here, if you 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 get an opportunity, and if you take it, you play. Yeah, and I think the manager's shown that as well. With you know a couple of our other young lads, Ben Johnson, he started him away at Man City. Just just tracked him in. We had four academy graduates on the pitch against Macclesfield. I think and Dean Garner's played yeah, great Dean, when he's coming. Dean Garner, Coventry, Joe Powell, you know, they all played and I think that's so good about the manager here. If you're good enough, you play. And I think for a youngster coming through the academy, with Manuel as, as the manager, what more do you want? You know, if if you if you're good enough, you're working hard enough, you train well, he'll chuck you in, no hesitation. And yeah, no, he's that, that, that's what I'd say really. When when you play, I think one of the I remember I had a do you remember a guy Bichente Lizarazu? Do you remember yeah, him? Yeah, left yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, great yeah, left yeah. back. I remember I played about 10 or 15 games and he said, oh, and you know what the good thing about you is? He said, you make good decisions on the football pitch. And he said, for a young kid, that's probably the most important thing because all the kids are talented, aren't they, yeah. coming through? Massively, yeah. But a lot of it comes down to decision-making in certain moments, doesn't it? When to play a certain pass, yeah. when to make a challenge or whatever. And I think when I watch you play, I think your decision-making, that's probably why you don't play poorly, is, is, is really good yeah. for, for somebody so, so young. Mm. No, I'd... Like I said, I'd, you know, with my decision making, I, where I'm playing in such a, a vital role in the team, I think my decision making has to be good. Um, and with the way the manager wants to work and how he wants the, my position to work, you've got to be so switched on. Whether that's you know screening the front the front man, my knowledge of that has gone up since the first game of the season. Just dropping into little positions, defensive positions, you know, helping out the centre halves. And like you said, if there's a pass, playing it easy, playing it simple, it, it's loads of little things like that that definitely stand you in good stead. But for sure, there's still so much to improve on, and you know, decision making is definitely a massive part of the game. What's the what's what's been the hardest thing so far you found in the Premier League? Or is there has there been one player that's surprised you? Do you know? Because sometimes in, as you have as, as yeah. in opposition. Sometimes uh, the guy I found the guys I found hardest to play against were the guys not the bigger name ones. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. We had a really tough game here against Watford in December, and I played against Decore. Powerful, uh, isn't he? What a player. Yeah, like people like him, he don't get spoken about enough. Like top, top player, and we lost two 0 on that day. But you know, for me, I come off the pitch and I learned so much. Like he was. I did the same. I remember I played. You play against someone, you think he just taught me a lesson. Yeah. There. Humbled you, but actually, if you take it as a lesson, yeah, it's a great thing, isn't it? Definitely. Like he was powerful. He was strong. He was picking passes. 
you know, he was up and down, he was an engine, and that day, you know, we lost 2-0. I didn't play too bad, but I found it tough. And, yeah, the, probably Decore, he's a top, top player, and he's someone I look at for sure. Is there anything, any part of your game that you think that you want to work on or anything that you think that side I can definitely improve? Yeah, I think, I, for sure, I think I can go forward more with the ball. Um, it's a hard one because, you know, you get praised for being making good decisions, smart yeah, decisions. I know. Gambling too much from there. Yeah. And being out of position, the gaffer's going to go, I know, Declan, like, where, where are you? Yeah, to be fair, you know, a lot of people say that I probably need to go forward more, but you know the holding midfield role. It's, you just got to do simple but effective things. And, you know, like I said, that's such a, a vital role on the side. And, you know, you know, we're not the ones to run forward and do a step over and, and take Look, a man on. I would have loved to have done <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, so would I. But I'll, the amount of times I did it, it and the gaffer's screaming and you go, oh, why were you not there? And I'm exactly. thinking... Boss, I'm just trying to have a bit of, you know, yeah. I want to have a bit of fun too. Yeah, so that's why I think my game, you know, I just try to break things up, set people on attacks and, you know, it might look simple, but sometimes it's actually quite hard to do. Um, but switching the play as well, you know, more from the from the centre, switching it side to sides. See, the Hollywood ball, it's not always on, but sometimes, you know, just to get it out to the wide man to express themselves, I think for sure I can improve my game on that and, you know, I'm working on it daily. I mean, obviously you've come into, it's been a pretty amazing week for you. I mean, playing twice... For England, I remember I had a, I had a similar thing. I broke into the Bayern team. I, basically, I played in the semi-final against Real Madrid and then played the Champions League final. And we won, and then basically, you know, all of a sudden everybody's talking about kind of my international and who I could play for. I was born in Canada, I had a Welsh mum, English dad, lived in Germany for ten years, and I it was something I never really focused on, you know, in terms of making decision like that. But but then all of a sudden you're in a position where you have an opportunity to make a decision like that. And I remember for me, I remember making the decision thinking I wanted to make my mum proud, I wanted to make my dad proud. But ultimately, the reason I made the decision to play for England was I wanted to make my dad proud, but I wanted to play with the best. You know, I wanted to measure myself with the best. And I think looking at you, it's probably, people don't realise that, you know, a decision like that is, 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 is a pretty important thing, you know, and so, there's so many variables that go into it, isn't it? Yeah, it's so much fault. Um, you know, I didn't think I'd be in a position at 20 years old to have to make a decision. Me like too. That I was the same. The I never. Place. And then you're in there, and you. Yeah. Mm. Like, and you know, it was obviously with playing at West Ham week in week out. You know, it was on my mind, and it was really stressful. It's probably stress you don't need at 20. Was that something? I, I mean, I know for me, because Canada had called me up, yeah. Wales had called me up, but I just wanted to focus on establishing myself as a That's as exactly a professional it. first. Exactly that. Before I made any other commitments. That's what I was saying. I felt like. I wasn't being rushed, but you know, more and more people were asking about it, and you know, it was I was in and out on the West Ham team, to be honest. Still, at the start of the season, and that's what I wanted to establish myself doing first. Um, and as I've done that, you know, I come to the decision that I've obviously chose to play for England. Um, you know, now, and that's all I want to be looking forward to in the future. Obviously, I had great times with Ireland. I played in the first team. I played in the played with the youth teams there, and I, I did have special times there, special moments. But, you know, now I just want to look forward to the, to the future with England and no better than having a great week with them last week. It was unbelievable. No, I think the great thing as well is you're, you, it's almost like a, a perfect step because they've obviously Eric Dyer's played in there, Henderson's played in there, and it feels like there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a spot there. Yeah. You know, for you and Gareth has done such a brilliant job of kind of bringing the young guys through. And, you know, if they're, if they're, if they're good enough, they're old enough, aren't they? Yeah. You know, and you've just played two games. What, 117 minutes from? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, it just feels like it's, it's the perfect progression, really, for you established here, and now you can take that next jump. Definitely, and, you know, with the players you're playing with as well, um, you know, top world-class players who are playing in the Champions League, winning Premier League titles, and, you know, to be around them, just to see how they work, see how they train. Like you said, there's a space in there, maybe a midfield for me to step into. Um, but I've got to say, Jordan and Eric, you know, they're unbelievable players. Great players. Unbelievable players. And, you know, they're great people as well. When I, when I met them during the week, you know, I was... You know, it's I was slightly awkward, isn't yeah, it, when yeah. you, you're coming yeah, in I, and you know I, it's... I know a lot of people can compare us, but, you know, like, I was, I was picking their brains because Henderson, he's been at Liverpool since he was 20. He's captain of Liverpool. Fighting you are smart, by the way, because yeah. if you're picking... Not your competitors' brains, yeah. but it is. It's a sign. I did the same advice. It's a sign of respect, really, for yeah. for those guys, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think with the way Southgate wants to play as well, I think Eric has been in and with with Southgate since the start. And you know, I was asking him little questions on how he wants the midfielders to move, and you know, he was giving me back the right answers. And you know, instead of going to the manager sometimes to have a connection, that was my first time meeting Eric. And 
yeah, he was a top, top person. I don't think I see it as competition. You know, it, it's healthy competition because we're both good players and I think if even one play, we'll be supportive of each other, that's for sure. I think a lot of... I think they'll probably respect that as well, Eric and, and Jordan, in the sense that you're creating a dialogue because they obviously know you're come. you know, there's another guy coming in for... There's only so many positions available, right? I'm sure even they would probably respect the fact that you communicate because as much as you're... Your teammates, you know, you are trying to get a place in the team, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, well, you know, like you said, there's so many players that obviously play for England and they're top players. Um, but one thing Gareth's done, you know, it, it, when you go there, it does feel like a, a, a club environment. You know, everyone's so close. And you know, I've heard stuff about the England, England squads in the past, you know, where there was that bit of rivalry. Oh, yeah, there was. I mean, in our, in yeah. our time, I mean, you literally had the Chelsea boys, you had yeah. the United boys. Not in a bad way, no. but just... Everybody sat together. Yeah. You know, do, do the boys do they mix up and yeah, they do like, that? It's, it's 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 crazy. Like Henderson and Sterling, they're, they're pretty much like best mates. And I don't think you would have would have said if Man United and Chelsea were fighting for the title, you know, ten years ago, a couple of the players would have been best mates. You know, it would have been a rivalry about it. Yeah. But you know, there the club it feels like a proper club environment. Everyone's everyone gets on. Everyone mixes. You know, it's, it's really good to be a part of, and you know, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. As Gareth, did he say anything? Just be yourself, do what you've done at so far at West Ham, or did he did he want anything different from you? No, he just said exactly what you just said. Then, you know, just to come in, integrate with the lads, and, and do what I've been doing at West Ham. Um, be confident, be confident with the boys, and, and and don't change yourself. And you know, that's what I went in and done. I didn't have to change for anyone. I was just myself, and. You know, the lads took to me, they liked me on the pitch and you know, I loved playing with them as well. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a remarkable kind of progression. I think you're still 20, aren't you? Yeah. You know, everybody talks about, it's weird because once you get, like the international decision, then people, you're playing so well and you're in England, then everybody starts talking about, you know, I think even the manager yesterday was saying about, you know, Manchester City and people come in and stuff. But I, th I don't think people realise actually sometimes sitting still and continuing kind of in, on that path is the best thing because you look at a lot of the best young kids they go to some of the bigger teams yeah and sometimes it's a bit it can be too almost too soon can it yeah definitely i think you've seen that with a couple of transfers in the past you know they've maybe gone to big clubs quite so hard to man united yeah, that was one rodwell to city yeah um and you know they probably didn't get the game time they wanted uh whereas here you know i'm happy I'm playing week in, week out. I have a special connection with the fans. I mean, look at this place. I know. It's, it's look, a dream, isn't it? It's unbelievable. It's and amazing. Like the connection with, that me and the fans have, you know, it's special. Um, and like I said, I'm playing week in, week out. And, you know, I love every minute of, of being at West Ham. Um, and obviously people, I'm being compared to players, being linked to other teams. You know, I don't really take any of that into I know, yeah. It's, it's the best thing. Yeah, like I think if you think about it too much, you get caught up in it. And, yeah. you know, I'm only 20. There's no need to get caught up in it, you know got your whole career ahead of you. I'm just focused on playing for West Ham at the moment, playing with a smile on my face, enjoying it. And to finish the season, do you guys want to finish kind of best of best of outside of the big six? Yeah, the manager said that since the start of the season. Um, you know, we want to we want to be a big team, uh, and we have got to have the mentality to be a big team. That's what he always says, and you know, that's what we're aiming for. I think, you know, Wolves are doing well. Um, we're a couple of points behind them, but. I think we want to push for seventh and, and get into them European places. I think with a stadium like this, the squad we've got, I think we've got to be pushing for that. We shouldn't be for, settling for anything less. That's great.